Oh. It's a miracle. Why, hello there, dungeons and dragons alike. Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy. Live streaming with the magic of a great wizard. And today we're going to be, I hope you can hear this epic little music tune in the background. It's really set in the mood. Alright, I'm going to be painting the Southlands and also... I'm going to be letting you guys know about a new channel that I've been working on. I already have several videos edited over yonder. I'm planning to release in the first week of next month, I believe April 9th. But we'll talk about that soon enough. For now, let's paint the Southlands. I've made this map quite big. I think it's like 14,000 pixels in width because I need this guy to be that big. This guy goes right here. And I need to still be able oops, to get detail out of that region. Oh my gosh. Because I've been doing this text-based text role-playing game. Meaning I've been texting my friends multiply let's just do normal and um, there are four PC races being controlled by them and they started off as one family and now they've grown um, if you guys want later I can pull up the document to show the size of each of these areas and the gnomes have been quite uh, pro prolific so let's see this matches up there this is Quills Peak so that river is supposed to go there. So it should be something maybe like that. And yeah, we're getting pretty good, decent detail. I think that's going to do. That'll do, pig. And then this is actually up here. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's take this. Oh, yeah, let's see if I forgot I was live streaming. Holy smokes. Ah! No. Good day, adventurers. Oh, I don't have to type. Okay. Let me know if you're actually real humans in the chat so that I will communicate with you. If not, I'll just keep talking to myself. I might cry a little bit. Should I rasterize this layer? No, I'm gonna go Command J, duplicating that part, and then on this one, I'm going to. Adjustments. I'll do it later. Oops. I'm gonna mask that area. I'm gonna get to paint them real soon. Have patience, my friend. I think we're gonna start with this region right here. The people of Nomica. That is their capital. It is quite the bustling place. Quite a central center of culture. The harpies in the mountains um, have. Uh, kind of formed a cultural alliance with the gnomes and um, I'll tell you all about that I think I'm gonna start with the history if you guys are interested I can go from the beginning but first let's figure out the painting style we're gonna use because I think I'm gonna go more freeform here and use one of these brushes from the um, what is it called KNKL KNKL show guy and uh, maybe I'll just go full opacity. Let's try that. Uh, I think we're going to need this one, actually. I'm really just going to wing it. And you guys let me know how it's looking. So I think Quill's Peak. Let's start with the mountain. Do, 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 do. No. I've been betrayed. I have but one. Loyal companion on this internet live stream. Alright, I'm gonna let you guys know about Pen and Blade, and then if more people show up, then I, we can, uh, you guys can ask questions or whatever. But Pen and Blade, because, so I've been making all these videos on Fantastic Anatomy, and they're all drawing related. That's the 
That's the point of the channel. It's about drawing. But lately, I've been wanting to talk about like Dungeons and Dragons and do videos that don't necessarily have drawing as a component to them. So let me make sure I'm on a good layout. Okay, cool. This is Quill's Peak, so we want it to look cool, but we can we can edit it. Let's do one more mountain, and then we'll. Uh... Quill's Peak is not as tall as this mountain here. That's interesting. Maybe it's too cold up at the top of that mountain. Quill's Peak is like the perfect size. So, um, I think I'm gonna. So I'm gonna start this new channel, and I'm planning to do a giveaway if, if I can, if we can get to 50 pre-subs. What's a pre-sub, you may ask? It's when you subscribe to a channel before the channel's even started releasing content. It's a show of good faith and a way to win a free Dungeons and Dragons book. I'm thinking Zan Van Xanthar's Guide to. Uh, Everything? What is it? The Inside's Guide to Everything, I think is the name of the book. So, uh, what better way to kick off the Dungeons & Dragons channel than by giving away a Dungeons & Dragons book? I think that would be pretty fantastical. So that's the plan. So we'll see if we can make it happen. And I guess I should show you guys a little preview of the content. But I don't think I'm ready yet. I think I'm going to release a trailer um trailer on this fantastic anatomy channel really i'm really liking this uh the way this mountain's turning out i decided to just go to paint to just blah, 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 just to go a just to go for a painterly style which the drawback i would say is that I probably won't, maybe I won't do layers and just keep it all on one layer. I don't have to do that though, but to keep it simple. And um, you'll have a little less of a little, sometimes if I want to make big changes, it might be a little harder in the end game. And also, um, I don't know, what's the other drawback of not using a lot of layers? Oh, you can't change things like I couldn't change just the mountain colors if I wanted to, you know what I mean? I'd have to like, uh, with just a, you know, with just moving a knob, I would actually have to repaint them. So there are some drawbacks. But in the beginning, like, I could do this mountain and change it, and then before I add, maybe I'll keep, I'll save old stuff on separate layers so I can use them if I need to, maybe. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I'm actually digging these mountains. So when you're drawing mountains, what I like to do is not really worry about things too much because it's natural rock formation so it's gonna have this kind of general shape but if you wanted to add uh, some other stuff like are there just these two mountains here? I think so, I gotta stay the camera so here, down here let's say I wanna do like a you know I can do that, a squared off top might be more reminiscent of a volcano if I cut into it a little bit, like there's a jagged piece missing. That's kind of cool. So with rocks, you can't really go wrong. That's why I really like painting them. They're quite, quite fun to paint. Yo, homies and homettes, definitely you gotta, you gotta say something in the chat. If you're gonna pop in. Don't be a creepster. Uh, all right, I'm gonna live stream for like an hour or something. Give people a chance to show up in case, uh, you know, and um. Just gonna paint this guy and have a good time with it. Now this mountain might be too big, I'm thinking. Is it too big? It's enough. Yeah, it's way too big. So I'm gonna do this. Maybe I'll do the same thing with the cutout, but I'll cut it out at the main form. I don't want these mountains to be too large. I want the mountains as they go further north to get larger. Because the story of this world. So the way that I've concepted this text-based RPG is that some tribes decided there's like in the north there's a big settlement, you know, there are more they're more established and starting in the Paleolithic era. So maybe like if you've heard of Gobekli Tepe or um, 
maybe like uh, France, France during the time, uh, the during Paleolithic times. They're pretty pretty settled. There's a lot of people there. Now, a tribe or two decided to leave their homelands and come down here, and I let them choose anywhere in this area to settle. So one of my characters, the Moonlings, decided to settle here, and eventually they migrated down here. And this isn't the most up-to-date map. Oh, it is, but uh, I have more information, actually. Um, they decided to migrate down here. This is like the promised land. It's pretty protected. But the rest of the races are over here. The half-orc, but that my sister, Nubra, decided on a half-orc tribe. Started here at Ogzar. Then we've got the uh, Nomica, is where the gnomes decided to settle. Uh, my sister's boyfriend, Daniel. And then we've got, um, there's Jordan, my friend Jordan, and Connor's, uh, Connor. Another friend that I met through Jordan is the Harpies, and he started up here at Quill's Peak. Interestingly enough, right by the gnomes, they chose the same, almost the same starting location. But because they live in different geographical areas, so the Harpies live up in the mountains, and the gnomes live, uh, while the gnomes live, you know, down on the ground, in the east, uh, they didn't, and they kind of had a different food source. The gnomes decided to be mostly vegetarian at the beginning, though some of them started to adapt the harpies' fish, uh, fish diet because they realized their fish is tasty. And um, some of them weren't as traditional as the original gnomes that settled in the area as time progressed. So what ended up happening is that they decided to live together in peace and work together and benefit from each other's technologies. And so, um, like the harpies have tamed these rocks. Uh, after they went to war with them in these mountains right here, which are now called the Dead Rock Mountains for that reason. There's basically a rock genocide, and then they domesticated the rest of the rocks. I guess you call it an extinction, because I don't think rocks have humanoid level intelligence, as opposed to a genocide, but, um, happened right along here, right along this mountain range, through the Dead Rock Mountains. You can read that. Because the rocks were preying on the horses, the horse planes over here. Easy prey, they just fly over and grab them and eat them up. But um, as the harpies numbers grew and they started wanting to settle further south, further they settled north and grew their numbers and then they launched an attack against the rocks, taking the dead rock mountains for their own territory. And, um, and then uh, they could use the horse planes to feed and even some of them became nomadic horse herders. And as the population grew even further, a few moved down to Lonely Peak. Which, uh, spoiler alert, I guess I won't say it. Well, there's a secret race growing down here. Quite a large race. Small but large. If I dare to be mysterious. Hello, good, uh, Watchers 3. Um, <laughs> I wish I could tell who was watching. I can't until you chat. I wonder if it's any old friends. I'm sure they would have said hello in the chat if it were. But, let's continue with this in a moment. What was I going to do? I was going to bring up the map of the Southland so you guys can see the territories and get a better idea of, um, a better, oh, here's a little, here's a little spoiler, here's a little spoiler. Here are some, um, thumbnails for the new Pen and Blade channel. Seven rad magic spear ideas? What? What? Ten fun lizard folk ideas? No. It can't be. It can't be. Alright. But that's just a little sneak preview. Don't save the changes. Now let's open up the Southlands map. Where is this? Should it be in here? Up Mondays. Now, the Southlands. Fantastic Anatomy. Fantastic. There it is. Alright. This is going to be the new Southlands map. So, here we have the different territories. And if you're any of my player characters doing this text based RPG game, Jordan, Nubra, uh, Daniel, or Connor, then you best not be looking at this. This is not information privy to your eyes. So here we have the Moonlings Kingdom. They're the pink. They're a pink-skinned uh, race created by Jordan. They're, um, I'll show you pictures and stuff later. I think on the new channel, Pen and Blade, I'm gonna really delve into this world, the world-building aspect, so hopefully I'll make the map 
My plan is to make the map on Fantastic Anatomy and then to um, build the world on uh, Pen and Blade. Wait a minute, can you guys hear me? Hello, hello. Oh yeah, you should be able to hear me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Because I was like, I remember I figured out how to turn the monitor off so it doesn't go wee and I can play music. Okay. So I'll just go through these quickly. We got some hobgoblins here. They're teaming up with these Xanthari, which are actually moonlings that were possessed by this panther god, Xan oh, wait, Xanthor. So, and then they became a new race of dark-skinned, uh, night-dwelling, uh, nocturnal leopard, uh, panther people. Like, it's it's interesting. We'll get into that in another in the on the pen and blade videos. So these are the Xanthari and um, Xanthor is working with, has created the Zansari, and also, um, has gotten the Hobgoblin, so they're teaming up. We got some lizard folk here, not too large in numbers yet. These are the Harpy territories, all the orange ones. The Orc territories here, and actually that has expanded, let's go over to the new map, kind of. This is a break-off tribe over here, Lorek, and Gordek is kind of a buffer trading city between Lorek and, um, the main Nabrashi tribes, so the Loreki and the Nabrashi, but if I would consider this all to be Nabrashi Kingdom, I guess this is Lorek, but they have a tie to each other and for, for being half-orcs, although they have a separate leadership. So yeah, we got the Loreki, Nabrashi, half-orcs, and then here are the gnomes, and though they don't have a lot of territory, they're pretty powerful technologically and in numbers. Nomika is like the metropolis of this world, Ogzar being the second biggest city. The Harpies don't really build cities. We have the Sea Dwarves, we'll get into those later. And up north there might be a little surprise, but this is what we got working with now. There's a couple other races that I haven't uh, put on here because they haven't made the scene yet. Alright, let's get back to painting. Mysterious content. Stranger. I'm not sure if this is the correct way to uh, <laughs> to live stream. Okay, look, what you're watching is me painting this map that's based on a text-based RPG game that I invented. So basically, I text message with my friends. We've got four of them. Each of them is controlling a tribe. Right now, this is the gnome tribe area. Uh, also up here, the harpies live in these mountains. So I guess it's also harpy territory. So we're working on the Gnome and Harpy territory area, we're painting this map, and uh, I'm also letting you guys know about a new channel that I'm going to, that with about, blah, blah, blah. new channel with D&D &D content, not drawing related, I'm going to keep this, I want to keep this channel focused on drawing. Fabio, Alfonso man, that's a great name, sounds like. Like either a politician or a mobster. Fabio Ramos Alfonso. I like it. So anyway, so that's what's happening. If that's unclear, let me know in the in the chat and I shall answer whatever questions you may have. Make sure I'm on the right layer, good. So I found out that there's two basic kinds of uh, rivers. This is very interesting to note. There's the fast flowing mountain mountain rivers kind of things which are flowing usually uh, at a pretty steep decently steep incline and um, through uh, harder or heavier set uh, either rock flowing over rock or gravel or uh, heavier sand and stuff like that so that's one kind of stream the fast flowing mountain stream the other kind of stream is the slow flowing um, how much can we zoom in here? I think that's reasonable. I don't think we need to get any more detail than that. Yeah, this is probably crazy, right? I'll have to, I'll paint a new map if I want to get more detail than this. So, and then the other one is a slow flowing stream that goes over a, uh, it's like a wandering stream over a less steep incline and usually there's more sediment. So it carries a lot of sediment, and this is like the Nile, rivers that have large deltas, the Mississippi, and stuff like that. While fast-flowing mountain stream might be... I don't know, nothing's coming to mind right now. 
See, if I made that too bright, well, we'll see. We should work on one small area at a time and then figure things out. So this whole large river is a big, carrying a lot of sediment into this area. You can see that the sediment has settled in this um, has settled in this area. Is my game online to play? You can play, but it's basically a uh, text ba text message based, and the rules are fairly loose. Lo uh, it's there's a lot of theater of the mind and dungeon master control. But if you're interested in the mechanics that I use, it's mostly a D4 based system. So I guess I could uh, share those mechanics. If people are interested in that, let me know. But the main way that the tribes grow is that let's say you have one tribe. Um, I guess I'll use the chat right here. So you got you start off with the unit of a tribe is one family. Hey, I hope you can hear this. Wait, can you hear me? Because if not, then I'm gonna be sounding like a crazy person. Yo, yeah, dude. Oh dang. Yeah, what you see. <laughs> it reminds me. Your name reminds me of a guy that I used to know who literally his name was I am love. You had to call him I am love. You don't call him love. His name is I am love because he wanted you to affirm that every time he said anyway so you'd be like yo what's up I am love and uh, so if I saw you in the street I'd be like yo what's up what do you see internet text based games oh it's not really that it's actually text messaging so it's through the text messages on my phone so I guess I could read you some I guess that might be the best way to, for you to get an idea without me going into like mechanics that I haven't really developed um all right let's since we're talking about the gnomes let's go ahead and uh oops let's zoom in a little bit here and then I'll go ahead and read you some text messages between me and Daniel who is I call him the great spirit of the gnome so he's almost like a, a day 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 deistic deistic figure so whoa uh, one of the latest all right let's go actually earlier because i think it'll be it gets pretty involved i'll do it kind of randomly okay so uh i'm gonna discover that the rocks okay so this is the rock battle now i don't want to get into the rock battle I should just do something. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, here's the chief's plan. This is what Daniel told me. First, he states unequivocally that any forest-dwelling druidic gnomes are fully forgiven, and they are free to live as they choose. And furthermore, other others that wish to join them may do so. See, the Skoloji druids... Here, maybe I can bring this up over here. Southlands. The Skoloji druids are a break-off group from the... Oops. I don't want to lose this. The Skoloji Druids broke off from the Nomika when it became a really big city, and they started moving over here near the Sacred Lake. And they kind of don't agree with uh, Nomika's, you know, deforestation to build homes and expand their population and stuff like that. But that's just what's naturally happening because they have lots of food and a fairly peaceful environment, at least at the beginning. So he says that they can leave. He doesn't want any beef with the Druids. But he also cautions that any gnome to formally or formally... Uh, leave Nomica, do so at their own peril, and should not expect any protection or other resources from the other gnomes. They will be considered allies as long as peace is maintained. Now, I want to show you the south lens because probably this one. So, are you guys chatting in the chat? Okay, cool, cool. I'm assuming you say please do to explaining the game more. But, um, yeah, so, okay, so where are the, the, we're talking about the, uh, the gnomes. So the gnomes are here, all right? Gnomica, see, it's got a, quite a big population. This is, these are the latest stats and what we're kind of working with on the, uh, on the board. So you can't see, when I show them pictures of the stats, you can't see how many Skoloji Druids there are. They're a very small group. They grow at a much smaller rate than, uh, normal settled tribes and um, so basically I add a d4 each time there's a growth turn I roll a d4 and I just add that to the Skoloji Druids for other normal tribes I roll a d4 I add that to the number they had before and then I roll another d4 and I multiply it to that number so it grows kind of exponentially so right now I might roll a d4 and get 2 so it would be 11 62 63 
gnomes. Then I would roll another d4, and I might get times three, and then there would be 3,000 gnomes in the next turn. Because this, I really feel like population expands in an exponential rate, and you're like, oh man, we got to deal with this. We got too many people. And then that's either going to spark expansion of territories, so you're going to have to go to war, uh, advancement of technology, which will have an impact on the environment usually, because you're going to use a lot of resources. You know, there's a lot of ways to deal with the problem, but the way you decide to deal with it kind of influences the culture of your um, of the race. And so I wanted human beings to be making those decisions instead of me just coming up with them, because that creates an organic feel. And I didn't tell. I've been texting them all separately, so they don't know if they're interacting with PCs or NPC tribes. So the gnomes and the harpies had this alliance from the beginning and they're both pc characters and i was sending their messages back and forth but they didn't know if they were really dealing with pcs same with the gnomes and the half orcs i eventually told my sister that the gnomes are daniel and she's the half orc because the half orcs have a lot of she wanted to develop their shamanic magic and by doing so i feel like it almost gives you metagame abilities because you're like oh i'm talking like the tribes of the orcs are connected to the great spirit which is controlling or which is influencing their tribe, which is the Nubra, my sister. And then, so she, now that they have that understanding, she can use that metagame data to talk to Daniel outside of game. But before that, I didn't want them to know. So, um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions or stuff. I know I'm rambling a bit, but I'll read a little more of the text and then I'll finish off. Um, oh man, this is a long text, but it's good. It'll give you an idea. So he continues to say, that's why this is so deep. It's crazy. Like, I had to stop playing this game because I know too much about this world. Like, like it's like asking me to explain to you the histories of the Americas. And I'd be like, wait, wh where, where do I begin? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just so much that's going on and it all interplays. It's really quite fascinating. And it'd be hard to put down a hard rule system for this. But I could at least try to outline the soft rule system. And I think that's something I would do on my new channel, Pen and Blade. And uh, actually, let me put a link to it in the description because I put up a playlist. And if you pre sub to it now, like this, boom, hit the notification, cup smack, actually kick the notification. <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, I might do a giveaway. I think if I get to 50 pre subs before April 7th, I think it is, or either 7th or 9th, I haven't decided yet, um, then I'm going to, uh, what's it called? Do a giveaway. It's Xanthar's Guide to Everything. And I'll make videos and you'll see how you can do that. And it'll basically mean you gotta put a, uh, you'll have to comment on a certain video before a certain time. And I'll take all the comments, put them in a hat, and draw them out. And whoever wins, I'll send them straight from Amazon uh, one of the a brand new, fresh, minty uh, Xanthar's Guide to Everything. And then you'll know everything. And then you can unsubscribe from the channels. And then you can throw your computer in the dust because you'll be a genius. You'll know everything. Not even be a genius. You'll just know everything. So. Okay. But he also comments. So he breaks off with the uh, Skoloji Druids. Now there's two separate tribes. So I'm controlling. They become an NPC gnomish tribe. And they'll probably come back at some point with some kind of like, you know, super forest spirit or controlling the animals to attack the gnome gnomica to wreak vengeance if they continue to harm the forest. Now, if they don't, maybe they'll get a couple warnings if they choose to create a more ecological community, maybe they'll grow with the Skoloshi Druids or a new alliance will be formed. See, this is all up to Daniel. When I text him, I'll let him know all these options, or I'll let him know what's happening, and he lets me know what uh, his decisions are. So, um, so he decided to break it off, basically. They'll be allies as long as peace is maintained. He goes on to say that a, form a formal second society of gnomes will be formed as a sister city of Gnomica. This will expand the gnomish control of the region and will broaden the array of resources and materials available to the gnomes, while preventing the existing society from leaning too heavily on nearby forest and farmland. Migrating on rocks and using them, rocks are giant, giant birds, giant eagles, like huge, like they can lift an elephant, and using them as pack animals, the second society, and he was able to do this because of his alliance with the harpies. So, uh, using them as pack who have tamed the, the rocks, uh, you know, because they're both bird-like in nature and live in the same environment. So, they use them uh, for hunting and for protection. Um, but they had to go to war with them and defeat them first, which was a whole other thing that happened. And that was a decision of, of one of the players, Connor. So, migrating on rocks and using them as a pack animals, as pack animals, the second society will be established to the north in a different forest mountain region. And that's up here which would eventually got called uh, Bloodstone Peak. 
Initially, it was called North Peak for a while, but then they found rubies there. And the harps called them bloodstones and give them to their so warrior harp society. They're like the Spartans of the harpies. Because the ones who traveled north traveled from the lush lands of the south to the harsher climates of the north and prepared for war against the rocks because they knew their numbers were going to expand, con continue to expand, and they would need a, a better food supply. And the horse plains was perfect, but every time they go to fight there, the rocks come and prey upon them and fight them off. And the rocks are way too powerful unless attacked in great number. So there was a huge battle where um, clouds, a cloud, dark cloud of harpies, just you could see it. And then I would even tell the, the orcs, uh, even though she wasn't involved in the battle, didn't know what was going on, that this dark cloud, you see this dark cloud in the east, and a great battle is taking place in the skies. And one of the gnome sorcerers who grew up with the harpies, um, that's a whole other side story. See, there's so much that went on, it's insane. Um, sorry if I'm ranting. But you guys, you guys asked, man. What's a, oh, let me check out the comments real quick. Oh, and then, ah, did I lose the text? Okay, let me finish his, his thing real quick. Migrating as rocks uh, will be established to the north in a different forest mountain region according to the judgment of the settling party. The settling party, was, so that means that I had NPC control over where exactly to settle. That's kind of what the translates to in game terms. The settling party will be made up of volunteers who will be rewarded with an infusion of valuable materials and will be led by the current second-in-command gnome and his family. So I replied, the druids accept the terms but say that, quote-unquote, or quote, peace or wars, no, quote, peace or war is not in, your, in their hands but in yours. The spirit of the forest is your ally now, but times change and the future is obscure, end quote. Most gnomes, that wasn't a really great quote, <laughs> I mean I messed it up, but anyways. Most gnomes are happy in Gnomica and no other families join the druids, though they leave in peace. The gnome chief can't quite shake an ominous feeling about the druid's apparent leader. See, I'm thinking that the druids have a good heart, but their leader is corrupt like a cult, you know? The followers are there for the right reasons to help the forest, but the leader has an ego problem, perhaps, or alternate motives, or a dark uh, lord, perhaps. You know, what do you guys think? If you guys want to help me decide on what the Skoloshi Druids leader's agenda really is, I can work that into the game. We're going to continue in the beginning of April or mid-April. So, uh, so yeah, I'd love to get some ideas and randomize and make the world even more organic. So, scouts find a nice place near the foot of the North Peak, a harpy settlement. This is me still. Uh, the scouts find a nice spot near the foot of North Peak, a harpy settlement. I figured they'd be happy to live near the harpies because they know they can trust them. And it's, you know, it's not so lonely and stuff. They have the, some support of an ally. Since they feel safe with the harpies watching over them and the journey by rock is easy. 41 families off to migrate. migrate. So at that point, there was like a large number here. And I would take 41 off here. And then I would put it somewhere down there. I have a sip of my tea, man. I'm talking a lot. Alright, what are you guys saying in the comments? Yo, Frederick the Great. <laughs> Glory be to you, good king. <laughs> Uh, listening, what's up, what's up, what's happening, not much, dude, not sure, what's happening, not sure, I'm talking about my text-based RPG, um, text-based world-building RPG game, no, text-messaging-based, I gotta, it's not text-based like one of these old-school games, it's text-messaging-based, you can text-message your friends, and you do this world-building, and, um, it's partially randomly generated, and I was just reading one of the texts, so, his reply to that, by the way, was, Second settlement is called New Nomica. So by the way, this up here, we got New Nomica is up here in the Bloodstone Peaks. I need to erase it off here. Um, anyways, we'll get to that at some point. So New Nomica is up in the Bloodstone Peak, oh, or, you know, on the at the foot of the Bloodstone Peak. Then I sent him a population census report, Nomica 85. So you can see how much it's grown. So at this point, pretty early in the game, Nomica had 85 families. New Nomica had the 41 that migrated the druidic gnomes were three families plus a question mark because he doesn't know and i said intelligent net intelligence network technology required for more detailed info so here are some of the different you can make stuff up whatever but i kind of categorized and i'm sure there's more than these and if you think of more let me know but broad categories in which technologies can advance there's four levels one is you got a little bit of the technology two is you got a grasp of it three is you've pretty much handled it really well and four is it's an integral part of your society it's like almost what your society is based on maybe uh these the the jump here is too much this is like you have a really strong one this is like a good this is a little bit and this is like hardcore 
Okay. And um, so I'll leave that up for a second. Oh, yeah. So you wanted to see they went from 81 and 41 or something like that to 1061, whereas New Nomica, 285, and then all these settlements around New Nomica. So New Nomica Nomica's here, or Zubal Hill, Nomuno was the second settlement. So you can see it's just expanding naturally. This is now, this is a half work settlement for trading with the gnomes. So, well, yeah. Henry Corvath. Man, why does everyone have awesome names? This map makes makes part of the game. Yeah, exactly. This map is kind of like what the game is based on. I look at it, and I figure all this stuff out, and I tell them stuff, and occasionally I'll send them pictures of the map, but only the areas that they know, you know, unless they send out scouts or something like that. Then they can learn more about the areas. All right. We could play here on chat. That would be pretty cool, you guys. Uh, how would that work? Now, see, this is something that I would definitely want to do on the new channel, Pen and Blade. Um, I know I'm, like, plugging it, like, but that's what you got to do, man. I know about marketing. You got to do it. So I'm going to share the link because that's what you do. You could pre-sub. You might get it. Xanthar's Guide to Everything. If we get 50 pre-subs before April 7th, let's say, then um, I'll do a giveaway. And you'll see the videos hit the notification thing because the video will pop up, and then you'll have it'll tell you the instructions, and you'll have to, you know, you'll have a day or two to do it. But you gotta stay on your toes, you know. This is the big league, boys. You gotta. This is adventure time. Wait, there, there, those are children. This is. This is like real D and D, but real life. I don't know what to tell you guys. You don't understand. It's like jazz. You have to ask. You don't know. All right. You did, Frederick the Great, glorious. You. Are Frederick, you are you are you're one of the great lords of the pen and blade um of the pen and blade universe when that expands. I'm definitely gonna work Frederick the Great into the mythology. In fact, actually, Frederick, you've definitely you've earned yourself Oh, okay. Big spoiler. Connor, Jordan, Nubra, Daniel, you guys better not be listening. I'm serious now. Okay. For <laughs> well I am happy. <laughs> good, good. That's all I want in life. I can uh, I can commit Harakiri right now. Maybe I no. Nah, it's okay. I'm kind of I don't feel like getting my sword and stuff. Actually, I don't have a uh, what are they called? The short ones? The short swords? Wow. Oh man, I should know that. All I got is two katanas, man. I got two long swords. That's what Musashi said. That's what I did. Okay. What was I saying? Sorry. Oh yeah, Frederick the Great. You are going to be the leader. Probably the leader of, unless I find another human kingdom, or maybe later on, once a human kingdom established, but the leader of one of the human kingdoms, because there are no humans yet. But I'm going to have a mercenary group of humans come down this river, because no one knows what's to the south of these mountains you see from the north. So they, it's like it's like going to the edge of the world. Like you just No one comes back, because the river fro flows south and not north. So coming down this river is like going into no man's land. And they don't have like seafaring tech, whatever, you know, just deal with, deal with that. That's the lore. That's for now. In this early time. Yeah, because it's Paleolithic time. So soon they'll have ships that can come down here and then they'll have to deal with the northerners. But before that, I think a group of mercenaries that were like outlawed are going to come down and start settling down here. And that'll be the first. So maybe Frederick the Great will be their leader or one of the first kings once the humans uh, settle the land. So far, the races we got in this world, we got the gnomes up in here. We've got half over here. Let me go to the Southlands map with the territories. These are all the races, pretty much. Um, the substantial ones, the ones that have settlements and stuff. So I'll start with the gnomes over here. The harpies. It's interesting because the harpies don't have a centralized location. And now they're actually down in the Lonely Mountain here, too. Probably over here on the Harpoff Mountain. But because um, they live on the mountain peak. So they can live like right next to the orcs and not butt heads in the gnomes. For now, at least. When the numbers get a lot bigger. I think it's going to be a problem. But here there's tons of fish. Look at all these river systems, huge ones. So they're good for a while, which is interesting. Um, anyone watches Overlord? I don't know what that is. Watches Overlord? No, what's that? Um, While well, you tell me, I'll continue letting you know about it. So we got gnomes here. Harpies are orange. Gnomes blue. Half-orcs. Nabrashi tribe are dark green. The uh, Loreki tribe are light green and they broke off because I gave my sister a choice when the original uh, tribal chief of Oxar was getting old he had to name a successor and there were three choices and one of them was the oldest was his daughter I think and then two sons 
and he named the two sons one as a military leader and one as a cult like as the main leader as the tribal chief um and uh the sister felt slighted so she uh fled with her boyfriend and their one family started a tribe which has eventually grown into so let's see where the Loreki are so see they're still pretty small now Gordek is once the Nabrashi found the Loreki tribe, you know, a couple generations later and made contact, the Loreki were still kind of like, yo, we don't want, we know that you guys, we don't have good feelings about you guys, we want to do our own thing, we have our, met they have a matriarchal society, so their chieftains are always female, so they created this city, or this settlement, outside of the Loreki's main area, where they would trade and have some interaction with the um, Nabrashi tribes, but uh, it's kind of like a buffer zone. Lizard Man tribe? Yeah, we got Lizard Man, so let's keep moving. Right up here are the Lizard Men. And it's interesting because they've been getting low rolls. So they haven't, um, their multiplication rolls haven't been super high. So look, they only have 50 and 16. And so I've explained this in my own mind, game lore wise, because they're at war with each other. They're fighting each other. So if I roll a d4 on the growth phase and I get a 3 for the first one, I'll add 3 to this. So that would become 19. Then I roll again and I get a 1, it just stays 19. If I got a 4, it would go up to 19 times 4, whatever that is, you know, um, which is substantially higher. What is that going to be? Close to uh, 80. Yeah, so, you know, 70-something. So, and then if you roll again in the next turn and get a times 3 to the 70-something in two gross phases, which I do like one gross phase a day pretty much, and I want this to be a long-term thing that lasts to like September. So I'm actually looking out for um, Matt Colville's Stronghill, Strongholds, Kickstarter, if you guys haven't seen that, Matt, Matt Colville, uh, Strongholds, Colville, Strongholds book, if anyone wants to link that, it's a Kickstarter thing, um, where it shows you how to make a stronghold, like a actual, to run in the location in the Dungeons and Dragons world, so, um, so yeah, so I wanted to build a world that I actually knew intimately so that when I build the stronghold, it's not just random encounters. It's like I'm drawing from this rich culture and history. Uh, so yeah, the Lizard Man tribe, this looks cool, nice quality. Thanks, dude. Um, what about an unknown race of grass people have no emotions or motive and are speculated to be some sort of summons of a magical race? That's a great idea. Yo, Todd! Oh, holy smokes, it's Todd Preston! Yo, Todd! Huge shout out to you because for like all the videos I've been using that um that hip hop intro you made. Hold on. I'm actually gonna play a little intro to one of the videos so you guys can see what kinds of videos these are gonna be. And um hear Todd's awesome music. So we got orcs, we got wretched symbol, we got um I guess I'll just do orcs. That's the first one I edited and it's probably gonna be the first one I release. So let's just go ahead and play that one for now. I'm gonna keep full screen. Star Ogar okay. champions. Are you ready to discuss orcs? Those green skinned, nerd eating rednecks of the Dungeons and Dragons world? In this episode, we are going to discuss 10 ways in which you can use orcs in your tabletop role playing game. Oh, yeah. Number one. Adventurous must pass an Is that not the bumpiest? Passage. The bump bumpiest? Do, 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 do. Anyways, you're gonna hear a lot of that if you subscribe to the channel. So do that. Actually, you know what? I should close this so my computer runs faster. Yeah, let's close this. And no more sneak previews. I'm gonna give you a trailer at some point. So stick around on Fantastic Anatomy 2. I'm not giving up on this channel for sure. I'm gonna keep this drawing related. That makes sense. Dopeness! Yeah, dude, you're the dopeness, man. That is literally like, oh man, that tune gets me so hyped, dude. We're going to have to work together in the future on some cool projects. I still want to do a, um, I still want to do a fantasy, like, like movie, short film or whatever, but with a hip hop soundtrack, like Gangsta Fantasy, that, oh man, done. All right, cool. It's over. God willing, you know, we'll put a prayer out there. Boom. When the time is right, it's going to be crazy. Um... Oh, dude, we got to have you act in it, too. I know you have a sick beard, so <laughs> that's, like, you could be a, an amazing adventure. Oh, man, if we get, like, a bunch of you guys, like, YouTube peoples that I meet on YouTube and we get together somewhere and film a short film, that would be crazy. 
that would be like the best thing ever. So I'm actually going to try to, I'm going to try to use this, this new channel a little more um, strategically, you know, like use my marketing skills and grow it and figure out maybe ways to monetize because if I could raise some money to like fly you guys out and shoot a movie and that would be crazy. I would actually, you know, that would be awesome. Okay, so hold up. Let me read some stuff. Lizard Tribe Man, we're going to get into that. Um, what about Unknown Race? Yeah, dude. So the Unknown Race of Grass People, that's a cool hook, like, to have, like, some sorcerer who comes, leaves one of these tribes and goes in here and, like, find, you know, and summons, like, an army of grass people. Right now, there's all these, um, right, the next phase called Chapter 2 Hordes, the Demon Spawn. Look at this number, 4,000. Look at the gnomes, man. 1,000. They're the highest other than that. 400, 440. This is going to be an epic battle. This is tens of thousands of yen, uh, kenis jin. So they're, le they're these uh, feral, ha feral tieflings. But I made them like little imp tieflings, like little demonoids, basically. Anyways, I don't want to get too off track. But um, I know I'm burping and stuff. Let me take a sip of my tea. All cold. They rarely seem to pop out of nowhere on rare occasions and help folk in need. Oh, interesting. So they're not... Oh. That is weird. You don't know what they're... Mo you, so you say no emotions. I thought that's an evil thing. Okay, okay. I'm going to ponder on that. We'll talk about that on the next live stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I didn't... <laughs> you're like, you're getting ahead of yourself, bro. I do that. I really... I get excited and then I just go crazy. Back. Sorry. Yo, what's up? Frederick the Great um we uh we all stand stand at your return you know in respect okay so am i going to so what do you guys want me to do should i keep painting this guy or do you want to hear more about any of the lore or anything like that or maybe i can do both at the same time or do you want to hear more about the text-based rpg system or do you want to hear more about pen and blade okay let's play this music again do, do, do. Do, do, do. i'm gonna start at the beginning because i like that beginning too a little sad by the way i actually want to give a shout out to and i don't know this guy but his videos see i made a playlist so i'm going to be releasing playlists too and most of these videos on the playlists for the pen and blade stuff are stuff i've seen if not it's stuff that i'm gonna watch and if it sucks i'll remove it from the playlist but it looks cool when i'm like i'm making my playlist and the best ones holy smokes dude Today I wanna start you guys a this guy schnitzenium some of the best world building uh, videos I've ever seen for sure and he's not, he doesn't have any many subscribers so you should totally support him like subscribe and add comments and uh, likes and all that stuff and like watch the video in its entirety because it really helps channels when you do that kind of stuff even if it's like I don't think you're supposed to do this but like if you just like leave the playlist running with his content you know and it'll watch through like you can go and make a snack or have lunch or watch something on TV and then He's going to get a lot of uh, watch time because you'll have watched all of his videos through. So I like to do that. So anyways, um, to support channels that are smaller and, uh, you know, um, and Today stuff like that. So, that like, I probably shouldn't be clicking and then clicking deep away deep because I'm going to give good watch time. So I could just go like that. But I don't want to use too much of my bandwidth because I'm live streaming. So anyways, this guy, that's all I need to say for now. You want to hear about my history? We well, don't have a history yet, so I will. You have to stay tuned because basically, I'm thinking okay, the next chapter is hordes, and then I think the chapter after that, so there's going to be some great battles. Then I'll probably be a little bit of a peaceful growth stage, let them have that, and then I think I'm going to bring down the mercenary humans, and there's going to be a lot of humans, and it's going to be like when the conquistadors came into the Aztecs, like there's going to be a lot of them, but these humans are going to come in and they're going to be fully like decked out with technology and like the romans like they know what they're doing they're a mercenary group they fight for a living they're not opposed to taking cities they know how to control the territory they know the choke points they know how to cut off supply routes they know all this they know how to build a fort overnight in just any location it's just like it's going to be destructive and it's going to reframe the whole the whole country. I wouldn't be surprised if Nomica gets conquered. If Ogzar, Ogzar, man, look, it's right in the center. That is a strategic location. They're going to go hard on Ogzar. All right? I'm just saying, man. I know I'm getting hyped. So Frederick the Great might be the first king of Ogzar, but there's no history yet. You want to be peaceful. I don't know, man. 
All right, so you want to be peaceful. So this is where it comes into the thing. See, if I was making it up, I would make Frederick the Great some horrible tyrant. But Frederick the Great's like, no, I want to be peaceful. So maybe he come. He's the second king. The first king is evil, and then Frederick is the one who who's gonna come in and try to stop the the you know take the kingship for himself in order to run the land peacefully because the original king sucks. So he has to lead a rebellion, and we'll see. Maybe he'll. Uh, team up with some of the different tribes actually if you wanted to get in on this we could i could get you in on the text messaging the actual text messaging game and then i would let you control frederick the great's tribe and you know move around the map and make decisions as you please so let me know man and if so you can email me i'll give you guys i think this email should work but if it doesn't then um if that doesn't work, then you can just leave a comment on any of my videos. I usually see all those. And if I don't get back to you in like a two days or three days, then leave another comment because I guess I didn't see it. But uh, yeah, see, dude, I had to take a break from this because I started working on the channel. And um, and so I started working on the channel and I was just like, I can't do everything at once. I have work, you know, I have a full time job. I work from home, which is nice, but I still got a lot of stuff to do. So, um yeah, so I had to, like, I was like, okay, I gotta put this on the shelf, because I was taking up three, four hours of my day, just world building in my mind, and on paper, and just, you know, writing all this stuff out, and doing calculations and stuff, it's crazy, it's crazy, so, welcome, my friend, the rabbit hole is deep, and you're not coming out, so, I hope you like it in here. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, there you go, is OML on my level? That's what I'm thinking, but I'm not sure. Or is that supposed to be OMG? <laughs> There's a sexy monster girls in this world. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I guess, like, there's probably some hot half-works. What else? We got the moonlings, man. They're monstrous, and they're, they're probably some sexy ones out there. I don't know if you're into lizard folk. Oh, my lord. Yeah, I don't know why I'm uh, indulging Fabio. It's just maybe because his name's Fabio. I just, I, I don't know. But, yeah. I guess, uh. Oh, man, you guys are awesome. Okay, so my voice is getting a little hoarse, but uh, I think I'll do a... I'll just stick, a, stick around a little longer, and I just want to remind you guys about the channel. Where is it at? Did I lose it? I think the link's up here. I'm going to link it again because I'm annoying. All right. Look at this. Wait, hold on. Let me toot my own horn for a bit. Look at this channel artwork. Look at this epic barbarian. You can't really tell, but there's a dragon here. Look at this guy casting some kind of cleric. I think he's a cleric. I feel like he's a cleric because of that beard. And I don't know. He just gives me more of that feel than a wizard in his humble robes. So we're going to have some fun. Four subscribe, Dude. I'm rich and famous. It's over. I quit. I'm going to quit. I'm quitting my job. Four subs on the first day? That's unprecedented. Faye James. Four subs on the first day. Is it unprecedented? Harpies, yep. That was a choice of the players. I didn't I didn't expect Connor to choose that of all races. They could choose any race they want. We got the gnomes, we got the harpies, we got the half orcs, and we got moonlings, just some made up race. I didn't expect the harpies or the moonlings at all. Lurendium's idea. Okay. Frederick, you are peaceful, but what for what cost? How many grass people you need to smoke per day to stay like this? <laughs> That's actually a great, I actually really like that plot line, that the grass people are narcotic, they're pretty much made of weed, and people start to slay them and sell them on this black market, and then there's going to be this whole humanitarian crisis, because they don't have emotions, so people are like, they're plants, you know, they don't like cry and scream when they're getting killed or anything, but like, they're clearly intelligent, more so than a plant, for sure, more so than an animal, they seem to be close to human level intelligence so it created a very interesting humanitarian crisis so and that's the kind of stuff i like to throw into this world and see how the players deal with it they'll have the choice do you want to you know you could even farm these people and make a lot of money on this trade of uh of pipe weed you know i guess that's what the hobbits call it so that's probably what we're end up calling it or no we'll call it um what are these guys called lorendiums grass people grass i don't know whatever the name of the grass people is maybe lorendiums that's kind of cool um uh uh they, whatever well, anyways we'll have some kind of name for it and uh, they can make a lot of money but 
is that is that morally correct or they could take the moral route but then maybe and you know someone who does want the money is going to fight them for it is going to go to battle against are they going to defend are they going to use their the lives of their people to defend this emotionless you know weed weed humanoid see there's so many ways it could turn out maybe they flee into the forest will they be hunted down what kind of hippies are we talking about herpes <laughs> Um, oh, and also, by the way, there is a hippie renaissance kind of going on in Nomica right now. They discovered how to, like, dyeing, dyeing technology. So they like, berries and stuff to make different colored dyes and rocks. And it's really, their clothes have become really colorful, and the tall pointed gnome hats are in style. And the small uh, uh, potentate, which is the name of the Nomican, um, like, highest leader, his king, basically, is the small potentate. And, um... He wears a gnome hat, a ceremonial gnome hat that's as tall as he is. And, you know, those pointed gnome hats like this. There you go. <laughs> so anyways. Um, he wear so yeah, so there is a hippie revolution going on there. And the harpies, some of the young harpies are taking part in it. I think the half orcs might start to get involved a little bit, but mostly the half orcs living in Nomica right now. There are half orcs living in Nomuno, that's becoming kind of like a cultural hub, and uh, the ones in Nomica are just basically the ambassador's family and like the people who work for the embassy there. Uh, I don't know if I like that though. Message retracted. Well, how mysterious. Maybe not, my dude. <laughs> I sent an email to. All right, wait, what are you... Anyways, you'll get to decide what Frederick the Great does, but the rest of the world is always out of one's control, which is part of the good and the bad. Like, honestly, I've, I'll, I might even have a, um, what's it called, like a biblical-level flood that just destroys almost everyone, and they have to start from scratch at one point. And Nomica is like this lost ancient civilization like Atlantis that people don't even know if it's real or not anymore by the time that, you know, we start... A Dungeons and Dragons adventure with the Strongholds book with um, in September or whenever it comes out. Grass people called Zal. That's so cool, dude. Oh man, that's such a great name. All right, I'll just put a note on my thing right now because I was like, that's gonna be for the future. So maybe I'll just do like a. Oops, oops, not that, not that. Um, man, enter. Yeah, notes. Great. I'll just put that there. All right. Cool. 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 Later, they found out a strong addiction to Zal leads people to see them more often. That creates a dilemma and also an interesting philosophical quandary of their like objective existence and uh, how they proliferate. Maybe the more that they are thought about. Or maybe the smoke becomes a Zal and it spreads out and becomes multiple Zals. Or the more they're thought about, the more they proliferate. That could be an interesting thing. So if you stop thinking about the Zal and forget about them, they'll disappear. I, ooh, this is deep, man. See, that's what I'm telling you. Like, all these ideas in this world, like, that might be just a small subplot of this many stories. that are, I've already forgotten stuff that's happened. Like, when I was reading what happened, it's like, didn't sound that, that familiar, you know. I didn't, like, know what was going to happen next. So it's interesting because, like, history, it gets lost and changed. And my the way I remember it might not be the way it really was. And we can debate about that. Um, do herbivores or vegetarians eat grass people? I don't know. That would be a good question. See, that's another thing. They could become a food source, and that creates a whole other point. The rarity of them would also create a high demand in price. Exactly. And then uh, unless people might try to start to breed them or figure out, you know, artificially how to artificially multiply them or anything like that. Um, maybe. I don't know, man. Mr. Frederick the Grape is great. <laughs> the Grape is being quite cryptic right now. Dude, we got 12 homeboys watching, and we only have... Hold up. If I don't have 12 subs, I'm gonna cry. It only saw... A2, Brutus. A2. Oh, yeah, maybe you don't have the link. Maybe you don't have the link. Three sub for... Give away Rawr. <laughs> I don't know. I should have worked on my marketing materials. <laughs> but 
But yeah, no, the, the Xanthar's Guide to Everything. If we get 50 pre-subs, so we're almost 10% there. That's actually not bad. If we get 50 pre-subs, I'm going to give away a Xanthar's Guide to Everything before basically on or around April 7th. All right, let's let's talk about that. Xanthar. Xanthar. I like how I'm like spamming my own uh, chat room. Like I'm like that annoying guy who's like, why is he here? <laughs> no, I like that annoying guy though. He's got spirit, you know. He's got he's got he's got his life to live. So I've actually have to work this weekend. I gotta go in an hour and I gotta take a shower and eat lunch and all this stuff. So I might have the spam great. The spam the the Chad is great. The Chad is great. So I'm gonna have to sign off for a minute. It's been exactly an hour. That's pretty cool. But there's eleven homeboys watching, so I don't wanna like peace out in the middle of all the fun. So I guess we could have a little more fun. What can we do for a little more fun? All right, before we sign off, we are going to add a race. We're going to officially add a race to this, and we're going to grow them one growth stage. How does that sound? So let's choose from, usually I randomly generate it, but I'm going to let you guys decide. We c I don't want to add the, um, what are they called? The Zal? The, uh... Yeah, I don't want to add the Zal here. I remembered that's a, that's a hallmark of a great name. Um, is this playing? Let's play this. Yeah. Ooh, ooh la la. Can you guys hear that? Oh, you aren't that old. Yeah, send me an email. I'm gonna check it soon. I want to check it now because then other people's info will be on the web. Um, and then uh, I'll probably check it on Monday or get back to you on Monday or something. Let's go to the spam room. Water-based drakes. Water-based drakes. I don't know what that is. People are so creative with their race. I think I'm going to grow an executive decision because, um, and we're going to go with one of the races from D&D &D Beyond. So throw in your choices and I'm gonna, until I'm finished, when I go back, when I click this tab right here, that's the end of the submission. So you can submit your vote for anyone on this list. When I get to the bottom of the list, I'm going to go to the tab. You just put the name in the chat, and then once I get over there, submissions are complete, and we'll have a vote. And then that will be the race that is included. And what we're going to do is we're going to randomly generate their location, and I'll show you how. Usually I randomly generate the race by rolling a, a d20 and a d6, and basically you, it'll, it'll go 2 to 26, and 26 is at the bottom, so you can't get... Aroka, but whatever. There's these um, Kenku, which are actually some Kenku up there. So I didn't mark it. But um, so I was like, we got bird people. We got harpies. We got enough bird folk. All right. Orc, Tagbaxi, Keaton, Turtle, Triton, Yuanti, Pure Blood. All right. That's it. I hope you've submitted your choices. What do we got? No one submitted their choices. I've been betrayed. <laughs> oh, to boxy. I think I might just have to win by um by uh, by default. Uh, well, there's probably a lag, so I'll give you guys a little bit more. We can have two more entries if they're if they come up quick. What if uh Zal want to be smoke? Oh, what? Oh, that's so good, dude. It turns out that they're actually like a magically created race. But then maybe they take a life of their own, and then they've got to stop this, like, drug dealer, uh, warlock who has released the Zal in order to mind control everyone. Maybe the warlock will even succeed and take over the city or a, or a kingdom and become the leader. That's really cool, dude. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Let me just copy and paste this. I should have been copy and pasting all the stuff about the Zal. I think I'll remember most of it. Let's see. Maybe I'll go up. Cool. The high price, yeah, that'll, that'll I'll remember. There's a strange smoke that comes off of him, like Attack on Titan. Oh, did I read that Attack on? That's that show is crazy, man. I could only watch it once, but I loved it the first time I watched it. But I can't watch it again; it's too crazy. All right, whatever. I think no one is voting. <laughs> Message rejected. I think no one is. <laughs> so be it. All right. Necromancers. I don't think that's a race. That's a class. Necro. Um. When, oh, just uh, you can submit your one of these races. You can choose one of these races and put it in the chat. 
and then once you put it in the chat, we'll vote on one of them to, to throw into the kingdom. But we might just end up doing a tabaxi uh, tribe led by a necromancer. Or at least maybe there'll be a necromancer. Okay, so this is let's 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 just roll with that. All right, Frederick the Great. Um, you oh pure blood wanties. Um, well, ugh, whatever. Okay, you know what? I'm sorry, Faye James. I'm sorry, but I've already just I'm doing this. <laughs> you have my deepest sympathies. So how we're gonna do it is we're gonna roll a d10. This is gonna be one. This is gonna be two. This is gonna be three. This is four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's how I did it. Nine is like this whole area, and ten is here because this place is pretty. So then, based on where I roll, that is where the tabaxi will begin, and they will begin with one family. But let me grab my dice. Okay. So let me roll my d10. Four. So we got one, two, three, four. And that's a nice place for them because there's no one there yet. So they can live and grow in, in secret. And I'm actually thinking the tabaxi probably, they're, you know, a predatory species. So they're not going to multiply quite as fast as other races. Um, because and they're probably actually a little bit stronger individually too. So there's like pluses and minuses. I just kind of think about this and keep it in mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide the initial tribe size. So it's not necessarily one family. It's one D4 families is what your initial tribe size is. So I rolled that. I got two. All right. So let me go to my little document. All right. And we've got um, the Tabaxi. We haven't decided on the name for them yet. So we're going to at some point. I mean, you can name them in the beginning. You can let them just live their lives. So Tabaxi. What is this? Why is this a Roboto? I don't like this. Hold on. Good. Okay. Um, so slow breeding. I'm going to do minus one on multiply dice. Because I want these guys to grow slowly. Because if we grow them too fast too, then there's too many players on the stage. In fact, for now, I think I'm going to do minus two on multiply dice. So the most they could get is a times two multiplier as they're growing. But they're going to maybe have a lot of magic. You know, dark necromantic. Oh, um... So let's say magic level one. We'll start with that. Necromancy. And there should be a good story of why they just specialized in necromancy. Maybe um, because they breed so slowly, they've been trying to get their dead to live, either to live longer or to come back to life. So they've experimented in these dark magics and slowly it's begun to corrupt them as a whole as in a culture you know what i'm saying so we got um let's say tribe that's what i use when the tribe doesn't yet have a name sorry let me go back to the chat see yeah i have a lot of it it's your thanks dude yeah see i try to think about it just like what i know from the real world but kind of uh try to think of it realist as if it was happening in real life so so far we've got the tribe is two families large um and then we've got them somewhere around here. So let's choose an exact location. Uh, okay. So do you guys, whoever says first, whoever first puts it in the chat gets to decide. It can be anywhere in this area. Let's keep it within the forest borders. Um, somewhere on this map. And you can describe it. This is like the North Lake, the South Lake, you know, the uh, West River, East River, those kind of things west west forest east little northeast forest the river down so down here with the lizard folk like closer to the lizard folk to boxy okay is that what you're thinking that's a huge honor to be summoned back into the world for battle so they try to be battle ready as possible on this planet in hopes of being summoned again oh dude that's so awesome see this is why i wanted to get people involved because you guys come up with way more awesome ideas than i can come up with on our cell, on um, by myself. Read first message. Oh, <laughs> thanks, dude. I'm sorry I keep missing your messages. I don't know. The relatives stay in the family by being summoned. The relatives stay in the family by being summoned by necromancers. All right, hold on. Let me put these together. It's a huge honor to be summoned back to world for better. So, okay, so maybe there's a, a great cost 
a resource cost and that'll force them to expand not because they have numbers but because they need these large resources to um to bring back their falling relatives that's pretty cool okay so that's going to be our idea for these guys. And I want them slow growing because I already have, you know, we got the Demon Spawn Horde. But it's good because they're in a different territory. So the Demon Spawn Horde is going to, you know, their main threat is Ogzar as well as moving probably up this road to this area. Now, these guys are going to maybe threaten the Loreki and the Lizard Folk will have to deal with them. There's these Hobgoblin tribes here. And the Moonlings down here might have to deal with them if they migrate. So, cool. Let's just put like a dot somewhere. I don't like pure black. Let's go like a nice brownish dark brown. Alright, and then... So we are talking... Wait, where was the location again? A little bit up where the river curves. Like here maybe? Somewhere around here, is that what you're thinking? That little lake thing. This one. Okay. I think that's a great spot because it makes sense. But I'm going to say, yeah, exactly. Necromancy should be doing in the deforest. Fabio, you, re read, you read my mind. That they want to be, they're not going to be near there because that's where it's too obvious. So that can be their main water source perhaps. But maybe they live, I don't know why there's a missing patch of forest here. Maybe that has something to do with them. Somewhere just like right in the middle, you know. And we'll see, maybe a tribe of them will leave the necromancy and start settling along the riverbank because it's an easier life. I don't like it there, it's too central. Maybe it's like right there. Because there's going to be streams and stuff. There's plenty of water all through the thing. So I guess you do want to go deep into the forest. And I'm thinking there's some kind of like, maybe there's some sacred site here in this river area that they visit from time to time in the midst in the middle of the night gotta go yeah i gotta go too yo thanks for reminding me actually um yeah dude i will definitely hit you up um i think i have your number actually all right dude see okay so let's do one growth turn and then we'll we'll call it a day what is this faction skeletor oh dude skeletor is here man we showed up a little late to the party but um okay i gotta tell you guys that reminds me skeletor do me the honor man Join the pen and blade army, the the pen and the the warriors of pen and blade, because I'm gonna do a giveaway for the Xanthar's guide. If I can, if we can reach 50 subs by April 7th, I'm gonna do a giveaway for Xanthar's guide. So let's see if I got another sub. Come on, come on. Yes, we are 10 percent there, warriors. Oh, glorious. All right, cool. And you can rewind. I showed a clip of what the content's going to be like earlier if you didn't catch it, dude. Um, the reason they say hidden is because their necromancy undeath scares everyone from the forest, the hollow forest. Okay, so what we're going to call it is this one right here. This is perfect. This, they're actually right here. And this is the hollow forest because there's this empty area that just no trees grow for some reason. And it's just like spooky. I'll think about it more why it's like that. But it has something to do with the necromantic magics leeching off the earth and creating an area of death. So this is called the hollow forest from I was going to say henceforth, but maybe not. Let me write this down in. Um, actually, I'll just do this the hollow forest. And I'll, I'll, I'll copy it over later. But, um, but you know, names change as time progresses. So, uh, the Hollow Forest Tribe, that's what we'll call them. Or, wait, no, I always do that. Um, Shadows of the Hollow Forest. Oh, man, now we're talking. So, that's the name of this, this, uh, cult of Tabaxi necromancers dang my boy what's up all right a shrine from the the past race tribe that is located skeletor man got my back all right sorry a shrine from the past race tribe that is located on the river in the tabaxi go see that's a thing there is no past racer tribe this world started fresh this is the past racer tribe so what i'm gonna say is that they will build a shrine at some point, a great shrine located on the river. And later, tr necromantic cults 
thousands of years from now, we'll return to this point to reap the necromantic magics from the dark rituals that took place there. And maybe that's one of the reasons the lizard folks numbers haven't been thriving because they're being preyed on by the necromantic shadows of the hollow forest because they need human sacrifice for their dark rituals and experimentations. Done. See, this is how the game works. This is how text-based world building game works <laughs> it's amazing it's actually the coolest thing ever i'm so glad that you guys hopped in and gave me and uh you know shared your ideas and your creative input and everything like that so um oh you guys should watch this world building playlist all right that's on the pen and blade thing and it'll give you so many ideas and then next time i live stream it's gonna be crazy all right so last thing we're gonna do oh farewell fare thee well frederick the great thank you for joining me today but last thing we're going to do right now is gonna grow the tribe so they've got a minus two on their their uh, multiply bonus so the first roll is a d4 and we're just gonna add it two so they've got four families and then we got multiply i got a four look at that so minus two that's two so they still got a double multiplier there's going to be eight families. This is a pretty big cult for powerful necromantic peoples. So um, in the next, uh, you know what? I think in each of the world building, we'll slowly build the tabaxi as if they, um, you know, and we'll integrate them into the world and stuff naturally. But uh, you'll get an idea of what happens when a civilization grows larger. And then I'll have to text if they inter interact with any of the PC races. I'll have to text my, uh, my friends and let them know that... Uh, Something's up. All right, so let me just save this so I do not forget. Southlands, uh, something BC. Southlands. I'll just do two for now. Pin and blade, or put in. Uh, no. Fantastic Anatomy. The drawing of the Southlands is going to be in Fantastic Anatomy, and the world building is going to be on the new Pen and Blade channel. So if you like the world building aspects more than the drawing, which is pretty much what we did today, I didn't do much drawing. But this is what I'm saying. I love doing this world building stuff and talking about it. So I want to start a whole new channel where I don't have to worry about drawing. I can just talk about cool stuff if I want to and with you guys. And I think I'll do a lot more live streaming there and stuff too even. Um, but we'll see. Are they all tribes? Well, I started them off as tribes and then they grow. Like right now, I would say that this one is starting to become maybe like a city-state. It's definitely not a tribe. It's definitely bigger than that, Nomica. And, um, you know, the way it structures itself is... Like, is I guess like a loose empire actually because it's all spread out it's not just one city with the surrounding region um it's interesting so yeah we're talking about necromancy and boom skeletor what i don't think so there are no coincidences in my my friend and i think one of the powerful uh leaders of the of the um of what's it called of these uh, new shadows of the hollow forest is going to be Skeletor. He's going to be one of their leaders. So, you know what, Skeletor, you should email me. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to leave two links. I'm going to leave the link to the to subscribe to Pen and Blade. All right, so you can get into the giveaway. The giveaway! All right, that's how you spell it. Then, I'm also going to give you my email, but I might not get back to you guys super quick if a bunch of people email me because I'm really busy these days. But I will early next week, probably, God willing. Contact us. And if I don't get back to you, then you know that the email probably didn't go through. And just leave me a comment on one of my uh, videos. And I'll probably see that, God willing. And then we got, so I gave you guys this info. And Skeletor, I want you to email me when I should live stream next so that you'll be available because I want you to be the leader of the Tabaxi. The, as if, you know, we'll have other people give input too and maybe we'll even have to start another race for the community. But I feel like Skeletor, at least for one growth phase, you got to be the Tabaxi. Uh, you got to make the decisions for the tribes. And if the tribes don't agree with your decision, if you do something really crazy or evil or harmful to them, they might break off into another tribe and you know you'll have different groups of tabaxi that's what happened with the moonlings you see the moonlings have um two bait and also with the nabrashi 
who had seen a faithless tribe didn't go with them to the promised land. They decided to stay in the oasis in the desert, even though they were commanded by the moon goddess Asana to move on. I can't believe they did that. All right, you guys. I'm going to call it a day um, about Monster Girl Fabio. I'm going to politely ask Fabio. Not uh, Fabio, please don't email me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, you can email me if you want, but this Monster Girl thing is a... Is a it's beautiful. Who am I to judge? <laughs> and on that note, I shall bid you all a farewell and an excellent weekend, unless we chat tomorrow, perhaps, so I might live stream again. And until then, peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone. It's weird doing a sign out like that when you're live streaming. It feels a little less genuine. <laughs> like as if I was going to say that to people in my real life when I'm talking to them. I can leave RPG music on. All right, cool. Check out, uh, yeah. Oh man, I already did my sign off. Alright.